Stanford University. Um, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Computer Science Department 50th anniversary celebration. Um, as we approach the 50th anniversary of the department, we thought that A, it would be an excuse to just throw a party, um, and B, we wanted to invite all of you back to reconnect with many of you that have been the most important, such an important part of our history over these last 50 years. Um, and in addition to having us reconnect with you, we hope that this would be an opportunity for many of you to reconnect with each other as well. Um, I'm Andrew Ng, I've been on the faculty here for 12 years, um, and uh, uh, many of you were here long before I joined, uh, and, and, and I look forward to hearing some of the war stories, and uh, maybe finding out some of the stories that what Ed Feigenbaum tells me 50 years ago, uh, uh, what, what, how, how, what, what others' perspective on that was. Um, so throughout today, we hope that uh, we will give you an update on the department, both in terms of what uh, we're doing in teaching as well as in research. And a little bit, we'll hear from a number of our faculty about the um, hopefully upcoming exciting developments in computer science. Um, and uh, throughout today, we have also uh, many breaks, um, uh, a long lunch and a few breaks that we structure to give many of you an opportunity to, 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 to meet, to reconnect with your fellow um, alumni as well. Um, one thing that many of us faculty were hoping to do is to get to meet many of you in person. So can I ask all the uh, current and former uh, computer science faculty in the department to stand up? Um, so I hope, and uh, so many of them are sitting in front because they're about to give a talk in a minute, but, uh, but I hope that uh, uh, you catch some of the current faculty later and, 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 and meet with them. Um, oh, thank you. Um, before passing it on to our department chair to, to uh, begin his opening keynote, I just like to acknowledge the people that had organized this wonderful event. Uh, this event, first and foremost, would be Connie Chang, who had led the organization of this entire event. Thank you, Connie. Um, and together with Connie, also her staff, Trudy Gonzalez, Stella Harkness, um, Jennifer Yim, and also helping her out was Peach Derner. So thank you. And with that, um, let me hand it over to our department chair, Alex, for his opening address. So I think the mic is working. Yes. So welcome, everyone. Uh, and uh, we have a, a really full and interesting program for you today. Uh, looking forward to... As Andrew said, uh, having a chance to talk to you and also having you uh, talk to us as the day goes by. All right, so I'll tell you a few comments on the department, and I thought I would give you a little bit of information about the present state, a little bit of the history of the department, and then just talk about uh, the future. So today, the, the faculty of the computer science department consists of 53 people. Uh, 20 of those are joint appointments, actually people who are in some other department as well as in the computer science department. And as you'll hear, uh, I think throughout the day, the department has been undergoing uh, tremendous growth in interest uh, from students and, and also research opportunities. And this has put a lot of strain on the departments in some way. But one of the things we've been doing is uh, aggressively hiring. And uh, very unusual for us, we undertook uh, a couple of years ago to canvas the world to find who are the best senior faculty at other places that we might actually like to have at, at Stanford. And we identified four of those. Uh, and as I said, it's not something we normally do, but we actually tried to recruit those people. And for those of you who are familiar with this sort of thing, senior recruitments are extremely difficult. But I'm pleased to say that all four of those have joined the department. Uh, one of them is already here, uh, James Landay, and the other three will be joining us in the fall. And that's in addition to our junior faculty hiring. So the department uh, is, is trying to, uh, to stay current uh, to, and you know, there's a lot of interest both uh, from uh, students and, f and faculty in the department's future and I think we're, we're doing well on this front. Uh, just to give you an idea of how things have changed over the years, uh, you know, computer science uh, started out very much as a self-contained discipline but has increasingly reached out to other fields. And currently, these are the lists of all the different departments at Stanford with which we either have a joint appointment as a full faculty member or a courtesy appointment. And you can see that it spans not just the School of Engineering, uh, but also a lot, of, a lot in, the, in the School of Medicine, a couple in the Education School, and increasingly in the Humanities and Sciences, including uh, things that you might not expect, uh, like physics and music, have computer scientists uh, in their departments. So uh, I mentioned the, briefly that you know, students uh, were you know, very interested in our programs. Uh, Daphne talked about this a little bit last night. 
Uh, currently, the department has 700 majors, uh, so we get about 350 new majors per year. Uh, since only juniors and seniors tell you what they're majoring in at Stanford, we don't really know all the people who are going to major, but at a given point in time, we have about 700 declared majors. 28% of these are women, uh, which is quite a bit above the national average. The big number is that this has quadrupled in the last seven years. I mean, the number of majors has, has quadrupled in just recent history, and so we're doing a lot of, of service teaching for the university. A lot of people, even if they're not majoring in computer science, want to take a couple of courses in computer science because it's obviously something that people think is useful uh, to their education. Uh, the MS program has been growing similarly, and a lot of that's driven by interest in the co-term program, which is where the undergraduates stay for an extra year or a year and a half after they finish their undergraduate degree to earn a, a master's level degree. And the PhD program is around 200 students. Uh, for those of you who were in the PhD program a number of years ago, you'd probably think it was about the same size. It was, it hasn't really grown. But I think as the faculty starts to grow, the, uh, it's very likely that the PhD program will grow uh, in tandem with that. So, but I think the really big change is not just the student interest, but the way the students think about us. So it's no longer that computer science is you know, one of the departments uh, that you know, people who are interested in engineering or a scientific discipline think about. It's something that almost everybody thinks about. And so now you're in a situation where uh, you know, football recruits go on national TV wearing the nerd nation glasses and, you know, and the you know, most recent national golf champion also you know, declares his Stanford affiliation by putting on these same glasses. So we've become part of the pop culture, and I, what I tell people is that we're not really used to being the high social status group, and that this is a, <laughs> and this really is a big change. And I think for the department to get used to this new role, and for the engineering school in general to get used to this new role, it's gonna take some time, because we're in the public eye in a way that we haven't been uh, in the past. So now, just a little bit about the history uh, of the department. So, uh, you know, before there was a computer science department anywhere, there was uh, Alan Turing and John von Neumann, all right? And, and many of you will, have, uh, will, of course, remember these from your classes. So, so Turing is most well known for his you know, mathematical contributions, uh, for proving that certain things couldn't be computed, and von Neumann for the design of the von Neumann machine, for the architecture that, uh, that has ruled, uh, you know, not, increasingly it's less, it, it's, it's changing now, but for many, many decades was the standard way of building uh, computers. But these guys actually were a lot more than that. So Turing was also a real hacker, uh, enjoyed doing things like uh, cracking codes. And von Neumann actually in his own time was most well known uh, for his contributions to mathematics, in particular for proving uh, the consistency of, uh, of, of logic. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the spirit of Hilbert's uh, problems and, and Goodall's efforts. So they were real computer scientists doing both theory and, and engineering, and, but we didn't have really call it computer science at the time. And uh, before there were any computer science departments, actually there was a computer industry as well. So shortly after World War II, and after these guys had, had done their seminal work, uh, the computer industry started and it was immediately extremely successful. And as a result, uh, computer science research started to take hold in universities, but it was divided. It was, you know, some, sometimes it was in a math department uh, following uh, the sort of mathematical side of uh, computer science theory, and sometimes it was in a double E department actually building devices. And actually that split uh, has persisted down to the current day. So sometimes you'll find uh, you know, computer science departments in the humanities and sciences. Sometimes you find them in engineering. More of them are engineering these days than in humanities and sciences. And some unfortunate universities uh, actually wound up with a department in both places, which they then had to figure out what to do with, either, either put them together or call them, you know, come up with a new name for one of them or something. So we often have computer engineering departments and computer science departments in the same university. But this is actually very unusual for an academic discipline to have grown up kind of across this divide between the humanities and, and, and engineering. And actually I think it speaks to the broad appeal of the field and, uh, and actually is a source of strength uh, go, you know, in the future. Uh, so the Stanford Computer Science Department was founded in 1965. This is an old stock uh, file photo of, of John McCarthy back in those days. And I'm inferring here that he's in some heavily air-conditioned room because he's wearing such a heavy sweater. It must have been you know, a machine room with a, and everybody's got his little uh, terminal. Unfortunately, John is no longer with us, but you know, certainly one of the people that uh, people associate very, very closely with the department. 
And what were the original areas in 1965? So these were the areas that were listed uh, on the department's, uh, 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 you know, when the department made a list of the things it was doing, these are the ones that were written down uh, in that year. Uh, but if we look at it today, you know, it has expanded considerably and reflects the, the growth of the field. So what's the situation today? Well, we're in a rapidly growing, changing field, and in some sense, this is exactly like it has always been. All right? So there's no sign that things are slowing down. And I think there are just too many opportunities. So there are so many uh, educational and research opportunities. The downside of all that is that everybody's just really, really busy. And if you want to try to get faculty attention in the department, you know, it's a, it's a struggle sometimes because everybody has a million things going on and is uh, and just generally uh, you know, trying to do as much work as they can as quickly as they can. So what about the future? So a little bit about the past. What about what's going to happen? And this is a bit of a personal take. And I'll just point out three things, three trends that I see that I think are, that are interesting for the future of the field. One is uh, computational thinking. So you hear this a lot in some, in some variation that CS is affecting every domain of inquiry. And I think this is absolutely true. Okay, so this is, there's no question that this is happening and that CS is leaking into every other intellectual discipline. But uh, it, I think it's actually a bigger story than that. I think there is an emerging broadly shared research culture that's organized around computational ideas but isn't just computer science. So this language actually borrows increasingly from lots of other fields, including double E, mathematics, statistics, physics, economics, uh, computational math, uh, operations research. Uh, and there's uptake uh, in these ideas across all the science and engineering disciplines. So you see people coming, at least at Stanford, people in lots of different departments who are organizing themselves around computational ideas. And a lot of those ideas from other disciplines are flowing into computer science. Okay, and a lot of these fields didn't talk to each other a decade ago, and, and computational ideas have really become the conduit for this communication. And I think that this just, just for, foreshadows a huge acceleration in progress uh, in, in, in the, uh, you know, the ideas around computer science, and especially in other fields. Uh, because when you have you know, many, many more smart people working on a topic, uh, pro uh, progress just accelerates. And so I think you know, there's going to be a very, very interesting um, you know, next 20 or 30 years uh, around computational ideas. And I think big, and big data is just, a, uh, is, is just an aspect of the phenomenon. So you know, it's, it's, it's one example of the kind of thing that's happening. And the ideas you know, from statistics and statistical analysis that have come in with what people are now calling big data and data analysis are really just one of the things that are happening uh, where lots and lots of fields are getting interested in computational ideas and, and, and both borrowing ideas from computer science and contributing their own techniques uh, to computer science. On the system side, on the, on the more von Neumann side of things and how we build uh, the infrastructure that we have, we've entered an era of limited power. And, uh, and so we, we can't just make chips uh, smaller, faster, and denser like we could in the past. Uh, we can do some of these things, but we can't do all of these things. And this is really a slow motion revolution. The fact that things are now, systems are now power limited uh, is just affecting everything in computer science systems research. And I say it's a slow motion revolution because there's so much inertia and so much of an installed base that it's gonna take many, many years uh, for this to play out. But you know, this has already been going on for a number of years and I think is you know, causing a, you know, a big uh, uh, upsurge in interest in improvements in various areas of, com of computer science systems research. And uh, we're gonna be you know, reinventing a lot of uh, our, our traditional stack over the next uh, couple of decades. And finally, uh, something that's only really emerged in the last uh, 20 years, maybe in the second half of our first 50 years, uh, is increasing interactions with human beings and human in the loop systems. And this goes from everything from traditional HCI, which I think was the first place where these ideas kind of emerged in computer science, all the way up to what we now call societal scale systems. So how we, how we build cities, how we build uh, um, uh, complicated you know, worldwide medical systems, election systems, things that involve a combination of lots of computation and many, many, many people you know, interacting together. And so these are uh, problems uh, that have a big policy component and often involve people well outside computer science because not all the problems can have 100% uh, technical solutions, but there's major research opportunities uh, for the department uh, in the next decades. So 
Uh, just to summarize very quickly before I pass off to our uh, other faculty speakers, I think the first 50 years were great. Uh, the next 50 years will be even better. And I think one of the most interesting things about the field of computer science is that the best time in history to be a computer scientist has always been the present, all right? Because at every point in time, the opportunities have just gotten bigger and bigger. So, you know, and I think this isn't going to change uh, in the near future. And with that, I will, I will stop. So. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.